Because Earth is a duality system, that duality also plays out in our consciousness. It allows us to form a reality that we experience based on how we think and feel. So if you imagine, for example, that each of us has within our own inner masculine and feminine, Jung would, would have spoken about it as the anima and the animus. And so it's not gender specific, even though we term it masculine and feminine, it's the way that the energetic forces work. For example, nature is seen as feminine because it's nurture and it's nourishing. Doesn't matter where you plant things, they'll adapt as best as it can. So that would be considered feminine. The sun would be more masculine because it just shines on everyone, good, bad, and ugly. It doesn't matter. You do with it what you will. So imagine that this duality is representative of within us of our left brain and our right brain, totally different functions. It's also representative within us with our parents. And one of the reasons we choose our parents is because not only are we going to be connected to similar energy fields, but they're also going to be representative of our own inner masculine and feminine. So by that, I mean, if you imagine that a caveman, this is just symbolic, a caveman and his wife are going hunting for food. So all the caveman is concerned about is from him to the object of his desire is just going to throw that rock or that spear or whatever. It's just a simple from me to what I want. The wife, however, that represents the feminine way of energetic use is that she's open and receptive for how she thinks and feels and intuits. So even though she knows she's going hunting for food because you know women are intelligent, she knows what she's about, she's still also receptive. So as they're going hunting for the food, she might notice some pretty flowers <laughs> over there and she'll think, you know what? That's gonna brighten up the cave and make everyone feel a lot better about themselves and life. And my home's gonna look and feel more um, nourishing. She might see some shrubs that will make wonderful tea, whether today or another day, it's just, you know what? This is really useful. We're gonna enjoy this. She might see some herbs that she just knows is gonna spice up the food and give it more taste and make everyone much happier. So she still knows what she's doing, but she's also thinking of the whole of what's going to nourish and nurture them. If we take this to the brain, you could say, now this isn't science, this is just me breaking it down in a way you can understand it. So don't hold it to like exact how science work, but anyhow, this is how it operates within us. So imagine that our original brainstem, what they call the R complex or reptilian brainstem, that is geared around nothing but survival how to keep the species surviving or to keep us alive and thriving. And so it's a very self-centered area. It's about me, me, me. And it's also about rituals. And those rituals will be if I take step one, two, three, I'm gonna get the object of my desire. That's the thinking. Whereas the uh, mammalian brain would be said to be more of the feminine, which is the warm blood, It's having your babies and nurturing them until they're older. For example, the reptilian um, part of our cells would just drop, you know, have an egg. Once it's hatched, it's like, hey, kids, you're on your own. Whereas the, um, which actually some parents do operate from because they're operating from that part of their brain. But the mammalian is more warm blooded. It's more nurturing. We're going to feed you. We're going to create communities. And it's a whole support system of, nurturing and allowing the group to survive. Where we're actually um, evolving right now is to use in our frontal lobe, um, which is a higher thinking. But anyhow, so if we go back to this duality, in our minds, things feel, tend to be this or that. And so there's a polarity. And you can see this with even the yin yang symbol, there's a black and the white, but within each there's a bit of the other. And so, Imagine that if you were to spin that um, black and white, it would be gray, which would be representative of the gray areas of life. And the gray areas of life has more movement and fluctuation, as well as more life experiences that we can have. But the idea is to find balance. And when you're in balance, 
things are neither this or that. They can be both because life is about diversity. But when you're in balance, you create an actual third force that takes you out of the polarity. So if you look at what our father represents, our father energy represents the left brain, which is how am I going to get things done to thrive, to survive? What do I need to do step by step? The right brain is said to be the feminine, which is how I feel my emotions, um, what I intuit that I should be doing. And the balance of the two would allow my feelings about life to be actualized through my way of knowing how to achieve those things that I desire. So if we look at it from a physical perspective, our head, brain, mind, thoughts would represent the masculine and our body, heart, feeling would represent the feminine. Now imagine that our father is absent for, from our lives, whether we're boys or girls. What we'll end up doing is creating an inner masculine that will create the protection that we need or um, the roles that a father would um, have in our lives in an ideal way, which is protective, which is providing. And so when we don't have our father in our lives, and it could be that he's there, but he's emotionally not available, or he's just you know gone all the time and he doesn't participate in our lives, we'll create that masculine role within ourselves. And so sometimes it will make women actually feel like they're tomboys or that they're more masculine. And what that also does is it makes us negate our body and our feelings because they don't matter. What matters is I've got to be on guard to protect myself from others judging me, from being hypocritical, from being seen a certain way that we don't feel is true. And so what happens if we're in negation of our feminine is that we dismiss our feelings and we dismiss our um, body. And we also build a layer of protection around our heart. Now, when you say this to someone who's quite um, left brain in functioning, they'll say, oh, but it's not true. You know, I'm a kind person. I do work from my heart. And I'll say, yes, but you think your feelings. In other words, I think I should do this for this person because of this reason, rather than the spontaneous, I just do it because, you know, I just felt to do it. And it doesn't matter whether they say thank you or the response, it's just something I'm responding to that I felt strongly about. So those that have um, their mother lacking in their lives, whether she's there, but she's not emotionally available or she's just absent, what will happen is we will end up protecting our heart. We will dismiss our body as in, we don't really see as value. We'll think our mind has more value. And we'll also have a protective barrier around our heart. And that protective barrier is there to protect our feelings because we have to, because if mom doesn't love us, how can anyone else love us? And so what you'll find when you look at your own particular duality is that you might fluctuate from the polarity of one or the other. And where we're evolving at this moment is to come into balance, which is in the center, so that it's neither this or that, but it can be both. But that balance in the center allows us to be grounded, to be fully present in our body and to acknowledge our own feelings. And what happens when we don't like our parents for whatever reason, we, and we find parts of them in us because remember we're created from them, we'll end up hating ourselves. And so the fastest way to begin getting rid of self-hatred is to find the value in your parents. So it's not that you have to like everything about them. It's not that you have to hang out with them, but it's that you have to stop judging them or your experience with them and let yourself get to a point where you realize they're on their own journey and their journey and yours intersected for whatever reason but it doesn't mean that you are them because you can make your own choices about how you want to live your life. And so to sum that up, if there is anything about your parents that you dislike and you find that within yourself, it creates self-hatred. And we can never be comfortable in our own skin. 
We can never be grounded if there are parts of us that we judge as not nice. So I'm gonna leave that with you for today.